Okay. So the last time we were looking at how we can draw an isometric box, right? Yes, isometric box where we're just dealing with straight lines, but it's not always the case that you're only going to have things that are boxes. You can even have things like cylinders. A cylinder is also a 3D object, and it's possible that we can draw it on a, on a 2D plane, right? Yes. So things like cylinders and other um, secular objects, when you're representing them on a paper, on a drawing paper, or on a 2D plane, we use what are known as isometric circles or isocircles. Are we yeah. together? Oh, forget about it. So I was saying, there are what we call isometric circles and, uh, or maybe isocircles. So when you uh, talk of these isocircles or isometric circles, they're always drawn inside um, a box, an isometric box or a, what is known as a rhombus, okay? For example, if we were to consider a 2D circle, just a normal 2D circle, where you, you get your compass, you draw, you open it to the radius, to the given radius, and then draw a circle, right? It will look like this. So we're saying, for this circle, of that center and that circumference, we have the radius R are there, right? As well as the radius R, are the same, uh, distance is the same, or the radius is the same throughout the circle. Yes. So for this circle, you only need one center, and then you open your compass to the uh, given radius, and then you'll be able to draw it, right? Yes. But for an isometric circle, you need, for you to complete an isometric circle like this one, or like the one that we're going to draw, you need at least uh, four centers. So it will have different arcs from different centers. So the basis for every isometric circle is you start with a box. And that box is, has got uh, the length of sides equal to the diameter of the, of the circle. For example, if we are saying this is the radius here, then the diameter will be that distance there, right? From this point to that point. So for you to draw an isometric circle, you need a box outside that circle that will have uh, sides like this. So the circle or the ISO circle is drawn inside a box. But this is a 2D box that is outside because we are, we are uh, referring to a 2D circle, right? So for an ISO circle, you expect this box to be an ISO box or a rhombus. So this one is a square here with um, the length as diameter, the diameter of this circle, right? Here. And diameter there for the height. For an ISO box, you have a box like this one. Something that looks like this, right? Yes. And that is why you draw um, your ISO circle. And you expect the distance from this point to that point to be the diameter and the distance from this point to that point to be the diameter of the circle. Meaning, if you have been given a circle to draw in isometric, you'll be given the radius, but the box that you have to draw. And before you start drawing a, a circle, you always have to start with a box, okay? The box that you have to draw will have uh, these lengths. So these are equal lengths. This side will be equal to that side and they should always equal the diameter of the circle. Are we together? The diameter, not the radius, right? So, on this slide, this slide is 90, Yes, at that angle. Just like, just like any isometric uh, drawing. Remember the basis for an isometric drawing? Yes. The basis for an isometric drawing, you always have to start with uh, iso lines. So, in drawing, we're saying this is an isometric box. First of all, you start with an isometric box, just a normal isometric box like that. So you, you need to have ISO lines for you to draw those, right? Yes. And when you're dealing with ISO circles now, you, you, have, um, you, you discover that you can only have three possible circles or three possible orientations of the circles. You can have, if we consider a box, a cube, for example,
Okay? If you consider a cube like this one here, you can have um, a circle. For example, if we say this is this is the front, right? This is the front part, and then we have the side part or the end and the top there. So you can have three possible circles. A circle can only exist either on a plane like this one, okay, or a plane like this one or a plane like that one. So three possible circles. The method for drawing circles is the same, but different orientations, three different orientations. For example, you can have a cylinder that looks like this. Okay? So when you look at the circles that are on this cylinder, there are circles from a plane like this, meaning you need to have a plane on top there, okay, where you draw the circle, as well as a plane where you, you'll be able to draw a circle. So that plane will be the top plane, right? You can have a cylinder that has been oriented like this. Okay? You can have a cylinder that has been oriented like this. And in the circles that you'll be able to draw are circles that are on the front plane like that. Okay? Or a cylinder that has been oriented like this. Meaning, the circles are for this plane here. So what's important is for you to know how to draw, how to come up with an isocircle, and you consider the plane on which that isocircle is. That is the... Okay, so let's look at how we can draw an isocircle. On a, so we're going to start with a cube. On a cube that has got uh, a length 60 millimeters. So we're going to draw a, uh, an isocircle of radius 30, right? Draw a circle of radius 30, meaning we're going to start with a box that has got length 60 millimeters. So since we want to draw all the three circles, one on top, the other one on the, on the front view, and the other one on the end view, so we're going to start with the cube, right? Like what we were, we were talking about. Here. So we'll start with the cube that has got length 60 millimeters length of side Okay, so we have we have three boxes here, right? Or three ISO boxes. So the front, the end, and the top. So we want to draw. We'll start with the with the, with a circle, drawing a circle on the front face here. Okay. Now, when you consider a rhombus, so this is called a rhombus. Okay, this box here it's called a rhombus. When you consider a rhombus. You will notice that it will have uh, two diagonals, two different diagonals. The sides are equal, quite all right. It's like a square, and then you just shear it. Okay? So you expect the sides to be equal, but there is the longer diagonal, okay? And the short one there. So for you to draw an isocircle, the first step you consider the, the short diagonal here. So the two corners. This one and this one, they are used as centers for two arcs. Are we together? The short, if you consider the shorter diagonal. So this corner and that corner there. So what you do is, you get your compass, place it at this point, okay? And then open it to the center point. Either this one or that one. So the center of this line or the center of this line. So get your compass, place it at this point, open it to either the center of this line or the center of this line, and then draw an arc. 
from this center to that other center there. Okay, so you would draw an arc like this one, and then you move to the other corner there, or the opposite corner. You open your compass to either this center or that center there, and draw an arc. Like that. Next step. So when you consider the the longer diagonal now, okay, the longer diagonal, you draw a line to represent the, the, the longer diagonal, the a faint line. Okay. Draw a line to represent the longer diagonal. So from this point to that point, faint line, and then. You connect this point to this center with a straight line. You connect this corner point to this center point here with a straight line. Where are the two lines? This diagonal and this diagonal. This is also a diagonal, right? So where are this diagonal and that diagonal are meeting, that is the center point for another arc. So you place your compass here, open it to either this point or that point, draw an arc. So you draw an arc like this. So even even the, even this other side, you draw a line from this corner to that midpoint. Okay. So let's try and draw another one here. On the other plane. So we said you connect the longer diagonal, right? So what you have to, to know is you have the longer diagonal and the short one, right? So you connect the longer diagonal with a straight line. Okay. Yes. So after drawing the longer diagonal like this, and then this corner point, this uh, midpoint to that corner point, as well as this one to that one there. have that right so where the these diagonals are meeting from those are your center points what Thank you. 
Let's draw that. 